I, I, I think from, from an agency standpoint, from a client standpoint, I think this is the kind of time when, you know, like we're stuck at home, you know, we polish the floors a little bit more, we we, uh, we wipe the counters. I think the opportunity for us is to really kind of do sort of a deep dive on our own account, look for those places that we've always wanted to clean up, and really sort of uh, do what we can do so that when the market comes back up, we have cleaner, better, livelier campaigns. I'm not in favor of spending for spending. So. Yeah, so I will say from a purely tactical thinking like the, the audience stuff you're mentioning standpoint, one of the things we've done with some people is we went into current audiences, suspended them from getting net new people to the audiences, but expanded life cycle by six months. So the previous audiences don't die off, then recreated all the audiences, right, with the news, with only the new people so that way we can segment to, to some extent, people who work from home versus people who were, you know, in the office previous to this, because we don't really know is how much this is going to affect how businesses decide to do remote work in the future. And so we have completely reshaped audiences for several people to be able to manage that segmentation if it matters. It may have turned out to be a whole lot of useless work, um, but I have a feeling for certain companies it's going to be huge to have the the corona right audiences in a way the work at home people segmented from the others that's a good point and that kind of goes to the idea that yeah the measurement of all of it's going to be tough uh obviously at least for a portion of it um which Tasha, i saw a couple of your comments so um we're in the same boat we're doing that top of funnel content stuff but we've really pared down the stuff that has been working for a while and our overall budgets are still lower but we've got a lot of those kind of bottom funnel campaigns that we know generate performance pretty well and this is kind of one of those things on top of it knowing that some of their prospective business is kind of scrambling so they might not be typing in exactly the right thing they might be trying to learn and that's where we're trying to reach them so the audience piece of it the way that we're trying to think about it is yes we want to create a cookie to audience if possible ideally more of a lead audience if we're able to like some type of custom audience because they downloaded a white paper and we got some information that way because some of that is going to be really tough to really back into there's going to be some of it where you can technically build an audience like brad's talking about and some of it is going to be that you just have to hope the branding holds through because like we've talked about devices are all over the place people are going to use different stuff so even some of those cookie pools that you've got if people go back to work really quick, or if people then turn those computers back into their office, something like that, and nobody uses it for five more years, the cookie itself might not be useful, but hopefully you've at least made the impact during that time. So it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a risky bet, but that's why it's only a portion of what we're doing. And we still have the stuff that's generating the rest of the normal business on the other side too.